Okay, so our last new topic um, for the year, the semester is on double angle formula, but using it in a proof. So we do have um, not as many proofs as the last unit, um, but we do have a few that go with our double angle formulas and using those to help us prove statements. So we're gonna go through two proofs here and then I'm gonna charge you with trying to figure out an alternate method on one of them and we'll do one more in class tomorrow um, or Monday. So just like with any other proofs, our directions are to verify. So our first one here, one plus cosine of two x equals two over one plus tangent squared x. So just like our proofs from units previously, we pick a side to work with and pick a side that we try to match. So on this one, um, I'm going to try to match the right side. So I'm going to work the left side to get it to look like the right. So when I think about this, I, want, I know I have a cosine double angle and I have to think which form do I want. So this again, we have three forms of this one. And so again, this is where we might need to do some forethought. I need to somehow turn a cosine into a tangent. Um, so I don't know if I wanna put a sine in there cause that might not help, um, but we can try it. Um, I think I'm actually going to try the cosine squared one. So I'm gonna turn all of this into one plus two cosine squared x minus one. Now could you try a different one and see if it works? Yeah, um, it might take you on a different path, but since my choices were between sine and cosine, I'm gonna stick with cosine. Um, from here, I can combine some like terms, so those add up to zero, leaving me with just two cosine squared x. So now I need to think, what can I do from here? From here, my brain is thinking trig identities. I need to somehow get tangent. So when I think about my trig identities, this one comes to mind. So I wanna try to figure out, is there a way I can turn a cosine into a secant? Well, it just happens that cosine, if I move the cosine squared to the bottom, I can turn it into its reciprocal secant. Now using this Pythagorean identity, I can substitute in for secant squared, one plus tangent squared. And we have our match. Okay, this isn't the only way to, to go about it. We could have tried using the sine and cosine substitution. Um, we could have also tried the sine one. I can honestly say I'm not sure if those would have been easier or harder. I didn't do, I haven't done those. But what I this is the what I want to charge you with. Try going from right to left. So see if you box the left side and work the right, can you get it to match? Sometimes that might be a little bit easier. So what I want you to do is here's this one. This was I think the harder side to do. I want to see if you guys can try on your own proving the right side. And we'll go over your ideas on how you tried to prove the other direction um, in class tomorrow. It is possible. Um, you might have to use 
your Pythagorean identity again or um, look into other methods as well. You don't have to use the Pythagorean identity. Okay, but essentially this is the same idea as proving that we did before. We're just now doing it using a double angle formula instead of our Pythagorean identities only. Okay, the second proof that I wanted to do with you is this one here. So again, we're looking at a cosine double angle and we have to again try to determine which of the three formulas we're going to use. So first thing, pick a side you want to work with and what side you're going to try to match up. So I'm going to try to match up to tangent squared and I'm going to work with the left. All right, so again, I need to turn a cosine into a tangent, but I have a cosine on both top and bottom. So this is where I'm thinking, if I have a cosine on top and a cosine on bottom, and it needs to become a tangent, that means I somehow need to get a sine on top and a cosine on bottom. So I'm gonna tr think about using the one plus no, one minus the one minus two sine squared x on top and the cosine two cosine squared x on the bottom. because that'll give me my sine on top and my cosine on bottom, even though they both are considered a cosine two x. So when I do this substitution, I end up with one minus, and again, I'm putting my parentheses so that I can remember to distribute my negative, one minus two sine squared x, and on the bottom, one plus, and I'm gonna use 2 cosine squared x minus 1. <clears throat> so on top, I'm going to distribute my negative. So when I distribute the negative, I get 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x. And on the bottom, I don't have anything to distribute, so I can just drop the parentheses. When I combine like terms, then one and negative one add up to zero, and the one and negative one add up to zero, leaving me with two sine squared x divided by cosine, two cosine squared x. I can reduce the twos, and I'm left with sine squared x divided by cosine squared x. Well, by definition, that's tangent squared x, which gets me where I want to go. So this second one was to show you that you can use, especially when it comes to the cosine double angle, you can use different ones within the same problem. Um, and it's all kind of dependent on that forethought of thinking, where do I need to go? So when I was looking at the second one, I knew I had a cosine on top and bottom and I needed to get a tangent. So that's why I chose to do sine on top and cosine on bottom. So I used the two versions that would give me a sine on top and a cosine on bottom. For the first one, I had just one cosine and it was on top. I needed to somehow turn it into a tangent and that's where my, trig ident my Pythagorean identity came into play because I knew that if I could turn a cosine into a secant, in other words, it's reciprocal, I can get it to turn into a tangent. 
using an the Pythagorean identity. There's only really one way to, to do these, and that is to try. You have to pick one to go with. There's not necessarily one way, just like we had done before. There's never one way to prove something. Um, it's just a matter of which path you take. So tonight, I would like you to try seeing if you can go from the right side and make it look like the left. You might need to use the Pythagorean identity. You might need to use a different um, function. Try it. See if you can go from this side to this side. And then I have one more that I want to do with you guys in class to make sure that we're okay on our proofs um, before we take your quiz on Tuesday.